Hello Neil, and we're here today with the brand new Galaxy Nexus from Google and Samsung. This is the new phone running Android 4.0, as you might have seen my software overview of Ice Cream Sandwich and all its new, all the new features. That is in a written review. This is just a video overview of the hardware of the brand new Galaxy Nexus. Here's the box. As you can see, it's actually quite long. And um, inside... We have some nice Google colors on the side, as you can see. But here's the actual device itself. You get a first look here at the device. More in the box is basically just the quick start guide, a couple of warranty cards. You'll see the USB cable and in-ear by the hair earphones. And down the bottom there is a charger for your location. As this is an HPS... HSPA Plus device running GSM. This is basically the European version and it is slightly different to the LTE version for the United States. It does come with a smaller battery and it is slightly thinner as well. But mostly everything else is the same. As you can see here on the phone, the entire front of the of the phone is the display. This is a 4.65 inches. It's a Super AMOLED HD display running at 1280 by 720, so that's 720p. It's really gorgeous, as I'll show you a bit later. This device is curved, as you can see, and has a power button on the right-hand side, about halfway up. There's also some dock connectors there. Um, I haven't actually had a chance to look at the dock yet, but that is a feature that's included. On the left-hand side, you have the vol volume rockers, which are about a fair way down, actually, but it's a really comfortable position, and it doesn't get in the way while you're holding it. The top is too thin to have anything on it, as you can see. So actually, on the bottom, you'll see both the charging port and the 3.5mm audio jack. On the, along the top is the speaker, and there's also a camera there. And as you can tell, there are no capacitive buttons, because the operating system actually has the buttons included along the bottom there. And they're quite responsive, because the touchscreen on this is good. As I mentioned before, the display is absolutely gorgeous, because, of course, it is a Super AMOLED, and it's got HD resolution. So, as you see in the software overview, the buttons do disappear for apps such as watching videos. Really, if I bring up a photo that I've taken before... Colors are vibrant and beautiful, basically. There's no real other way to describe it except for the fact that this screen is simply amazing. On the back of the device, you'll see that there's actually a really nice um, pattern on it, which it isn't attractive to fingerprints, so it's pretty much matte in that respect, and it's, it's really nice. And it, the, as you'll see, there's also a bump on the bottom of the curve, that does make the device quite thick at the bottom, but it is a bit its a bit confusing because at the top it's really thin, at the bottom it's quite thick, so that's sort of an illusion there. But it does give it some grip, and it prevents the phone from slipping out of your hand while you're using it. Honestly, this is one of the most comfortable designs in a phone I've ever used. Up to your, up to your face, the curved design is really, really nice. It fits perfectly on the side of your face. It's really comfortable to use, and... Because of the buttons along the bottom, the screen size isn't so massive that you can't actually end up using it. For example, while I'm using it here, from the top to the bottom of the screen is pretty much my thumb height, and the buttons are just a bit further like they would be on a normal phone. And really, everything is really responsive and great about the operating system. You do see some Google and Samsung branding on the back. Of course, this is a Google phone, but it's been made by Samsung. There's some tight partnership there. You also notice that there's a 5 megapixel camera on the back with LED flash. Before this device was released, I was hearing a lot of complaints about the fact that it's a top-end device, but you're not getting an 8 or 12 megapixel camera in it. But really, the 5 megapixel camera in this is simply amazing. The still shots that you get out of it, as you saw one before here, are really, really good. 
And pretty much, as you can see there, the difference between flash off and flash on is it does have a flash. And basically, all the pictures that I took are really vibrant, not only on the Super AMOLED display itself, but on the computer as well. And the focus quality is great. As you can see, I have taken some panoramas, as the camera does support panorama mode. And it also does burst shot, as you can see here. All of these are taken in the space of about a second. Focus quality is really good, and you should check out these photos more in detail in the full written review. Also, the performance of the device is really quite good. It, Android 4.0, for the first time ever, is hardware accelerated. And it's properly hardware accelerated, which means that browsing between everything is just really, really smooth. For example, if we go to neowin.net, even when it's half loaded, the browser is simply smooth and amazing to use. Scrolling around, there's absolutely no lag whatsoever. Panning in and out, you only get this very slight, um, what would normally be checkerboarding. But on here, it's pretty much, it's great. And because it's so, big, the, the display, and also because it's such high resolution, reading text is simply amazing. Even when I zoom it the whole way out, I can I can read the text that these things are saying. For example, it says, did you know that Windows Phone supports many more emoticons than just the ones you see on the keyboard? It's really quite amazing how good this display is, and the performance of using it throughout apps and things like that is really quite good. Unfortunately, the graphics processor inside is not completely amazing. It is a PowerVR SGX540, and I have one of those in my Galaxy S, and that's about a year and a half old now. But in games, I've tried a few, such as Gorilla Bob I've got there, and Dragonfly, Angry Birds. It's really quite smooth in, th in 3D games. I haven't really tested the high-end ones, but judging by the benchmarks, which again you'll see in the written review, it's it's not... Mali 400 MP like you see in the Galaxy S2, but it is still fairly respectable for what's in it, and I don't think you'd be disappointed considering all the other features on this device. Another thing worth mentioning is, of course, the music player. I'll give you a quick demonstration of what it sounds like straight out of the back of the device. As you can hear, it's quite tinny and awful, but that's uh, to be expected, I guess, when many devices are quite bad. Or, however, through the actual headphone jack on the bottom, it does sound really good, and you do have the option, as you can see here, sound effects. You have a full graphic equalizer. You can change up the levels of the device if you like, and that does give you some options for perfecting the audio out of it. The video playback isn't quite as good. It doesn't support a lot of formats. Uh, in the seven-part video playback test, it does not play AVI files, and it doesn't play some MP4 files, and doesn't really support six-channel audio at all, which is somewhat of a downside, because as you'll see here, as you can see there, it does use the full display something that obviously Google and Samsung have thought of. Another thing that I haven't shown off about the Galaxy Nexus is the zero shutter lag feature. For example, if we unlock the camera, we can take a photo of, for example, the Galaxy Nexus box, and it will automatically focus for you, and the photo is taken instantly in that very second that I press the button. See that again? And that's for burst shot as well. It's all instant. That is really quite amazing about the Galaxy Nexus, and one of the features is that I really do like, apart from obviously the design and the camera, which are also really amazing, and the Android 4.0 software is also really quite good. You do need to check out the full re review on Android 4.0 to get all the features about the software. There are so many new features in Android 4.0 that I can't really go through them all in a reasonably timed video. So I'm just giving you the hardware overview of the device right now. 
As you can see here, the size of the device is about the size of a normal human hand, which is quite good. It fits nicely in the pocket, obviously. We talked about how comfortable it is to use. Basically, everything about this device is really good, and the minor downsides are really only minor. And if you're thinking about getting this device, I'm sure you will look past them. Big thank you, of course, to mobbycity.com.au. They sent out the Galaxy Nexus for us today to do the review. Of course, please check out the full written review. I go into a lot of detail about all the little bits and pieces of the Galaxy Nexus. And, of course, check out the Android 4.0 review as well. If you have any questions specifically about the Galaxy Nexus, and if you're in the United States, I know you can't get it yet. I believe that's coming out really soon with the LTE version. Um, this device is very similar, as I mentioned. Um, you can feel free to ask me any questions on my Twitter, at ScorpusV. Also follow NeoWinFeed, at NeoWinFeed. Thank you, guys. And I'm going to enjoy the nice 30 degrees Celsius day outside. And you enjoy the rest of your days.